An unspoken truth in the airship community is that as long as we are filling airships with helium, their practical applications will be limited. This is because helium is too rare, too useful in other fields, and overall just too expensive. Hydrogen is a famously dangerous gas, but there are methods we can use to reduce this risk, although we can never really eliminate it. Even helium-filled airships are not immune to the risk of fire, as shown in the tragic accident in 2011 when an A-60 caught on fire. So, we've been interested in improving fire safety in airships for a long time. Today I'm going to share with you the method we've found that worked the best so far for small airships. But first, we need to talk a little bit about how fire itself works. In many ways, a flame on an airship can be thought of as similar to a thruster. Except, instead of moving air using propeller blades, it moves air through convection. It pushes the air upwards, and it sucks air from below and from the sides. That air, of course, includes oxygen, which the flame needs to keep itself going. So what we need to do is interrupt this flow of oxygen by introducing something else into the airflow. We do this by putting the hydrogen envelope within a buffer of other non-flammable gases. If the flame is on the top of the airship, the solution is easy. Once the envelope is breached by the heat of the flame, the non-flammable gas is naturally drawn up into the flame, depriving it of oxygen and putting it out. So for the buffer on the top of the envelope, we can use nitrogen, which is abundant, non-flammable, and slightly lighter than air. But what about when the flame is at the bottom of the envelope? Because the flame naturally pushes the air upwards, much of the non-flammable gas will be pushed away from the flame. Some may reach it through diffusion and pressure within the envelope, but this is not very efficient. A better way to address this is to use a gas that is heavier than air, so it naturally wants to concentrate below the flame. Then the convective flow of the flame will pull that gas up into the flame depriving it of oxygen and putting it out. So we use carbon dioxide, which is a very effective firefighting gas used in common B and C type fire extinguishers. It's good at putting out electrical and liquid fuel fires because it is heavier than air, and thus tends to concentrate at the base of the fire, suffocating it. Now let's look at this in operation and how it performs in comparison to a regular hydrogen envelope. This is an old failed experiment of mine, it didn't really work out, so we're going to take this envelope and we're going to fill it with hydrogen and we're going to set it on fire. In this test, I will use a candle to introduce the flame and put it near the bottom of the envelope. As you can see, the moment the fire touches the envelope, the whole thing bursts into flame. And even after the initial hydrogen fire is out, secondary fires continue to burn for some time. This could pose significant danger to the environment you're flying in, and so obviously we want to avoid that. This envelope has been constructed with a central envelope filled with hydrogen and two buffer envelopes. The one on top is filled with nitrogen. The one on bottom is filled with carbon dioxide. Now, these buffer envelopes do add to the weight and drag, of course, because they increase the dimensions of the airship. The mass of the envelope is 2.28 times that of a regular envelope, so we want to use lightweight materials to construct this, so we will have the lift we need. Or we may have to make the airship a little bigger than we were otherwise planning. It also increases drag by about 30% so it may need a bit more thrust. I used a pretty wide buffer, 5 centimeters on every side for a 50 centimeter diameter envelope, and the wider the buffer is, the larger flame it can tolerate. So this can be tailored according to your needs. Let's put the flame to this envelope and see what happens. For the first test, I put the flame to the bottom of the envelope. You can see it start heating up the bottom of the envelope in the infrared view. But the moment the envelope is breached, that carbon dioxide comes out. 
and it gets drawn up into the flame and it puts it out, leaving nothing but a small hole. Then I patched the hole in the envelope with some tape and repressurized it with carbon dioxide. Now we will test the top buffer, the nitrogen filled one. This time, the flame must get much closer in order to breach the envelope, because we don't have that heat rising up into the envelope. Again, the moment the nitrogen comes out from the envelope, it puts the flame out. This time, the hole is smaller, showing how the flame is much less effective at burning down than up. For the third test, I will not repressurize the envelope. So, the envelope is hanging loosely, and there will not be a puff of gas due to the envelope pressure when it gets breached. Again, like magic, the moment the CO2 comes out, the flame is extinguished. You may be wondering, how does this compare to a helium envelope? Well, let's find out. When we put the flame to this helium-filled envelope, of course, it doesn't burst into flames like the hydrogen did. But it also doesn't put the fire out as quickly as the sheathed hydrogen envelope does. I'm going to play this again slower and side by side with the carbon dioxide and nitrogen sheathed hydrogen envelope. At this point, the envelope has been breached on both the sheathed hydrogen and the helium envelope. But as you can see, the fire continues to burn for several more seconds on the helium envelope, whereas the CO2 puts the fire out almost immediately on the sheathed envelope. So, this works pretty well. Of course, hydrogen is still dangerous, and if you want to use this in your own project, you need to do your own testing and make sure you have a good safety plan in place. But hopefully this gives you some ideas and might help you get started.